So this is the answer key to the test review. So number one and two says describe as an exponential growth or decay. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to identify what the uh, um, the b value is. So for the first one, it's going to be the number that's raised to the exponent. So in this case, our b value is two thirds raised to the x value. I don't even need the x value. Sorry, our b value is two thirds because it's raised to that x. So two thirds is less than one. So that is going to be called decay. For number two, again, we look at that six-fifths right there. That's raised to the power, so our b value is six-fifths. And six divided by five is greater than one, so that's going to be growth. All right, for the next one, it says graph each function and identify its key characteristics. Okay, so this is an exponential function. So again, how do we know what's the parent function part? Well, it's the base raised to the power. So for this one, it's gonna be y raised to the three x power. So we're gonna first start by creating our table. I like to start at negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then we're gonna get our y values. So three raised to the negative two power is one third. And then we have, oh, sorry, one ninth. Sorry about that. Three to the negative two power is one ninth. Three to the negative one power is one third. Three to the zero is one. So the first is three and three squared is nine, okay? Now we're gonna apply our transformations. So for x plus one, that is left one. So we're gonna take away one from each x value. And then for our y values, um, we're going to go down six. So that's gonna be y minus six. So for my transform table, let's see. So x minus one, y minus six. So if we go ahead and take away one, it would be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Oh, sorry, one, I had an extra number there, my bad. And then for the y values, let me go ahead and see real quick. All right, so we have one ninth, minus six and we get negative 5.88 so negative 5.9 um, let me see one third minus six is going to be negative 5.7 and then we have negative five and then we have three minus six is negative three and we have nine minus six is three okay now because my graph went down six, that means my horizontal, or horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my horizontal asymptote. Um, I'm gonna plot these points. So negative three, and then down almost six, so like right there. Negative two, negative 5.7, so right here. Negative one, negative five, zero, negative three. And one, one, two, three. Okay, make our graph the best we can. Oh, that was, sorry, that second one was pretty bad. Let me see if I can fix that, make it a little nicer. All right, so let me make this a little bit nicer and it doesn't cross or touch the asymptote and there's my graph right there. All right, so for the domain here, it's all real numbers from left to right. My range, y is greater than negative six or negative six to infinity. So as x approaches infinity, my y value also approaches infinity. But as x approaches negative infinity, my graph does not go below the line y equals negative six, so it, y approaches negative six. For my y-intercept, I can see that is right here, which is zero comma negative three. And for our horizontal asymptote, y is equal to negative six. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So this is a log function. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write its exponential form. So it'd be two to the x power. So y equals two to the x power. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So two to the negative two power is one fourth or 0.25. Two to the negative one is one half. Raised to the zero power is one two, and four. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip them to get our log. So we're gonna switch the x and the y. And this is gonna be our log function here. So now I'm gonna switch the x and the y. 
So one fourth, one half, one, two, and four, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And now I'm gonna apply my transformations, right? So from here, um, X is not affected in any way, but my Y values is down three, so it's Y minus three. So X is not changed and Y minus three. So X is one fourth, one half, one, two, and four. And then I subtract three from the other ones, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, and two minus three is negative one. All right, now these ones, they have vertical asymptotes. So there was no left or right movements. So my vertical asymptote will be at X is equal to zero. And now I'm gonna graph it. So one fourth and negative five, two, three, four, five. One half and negative four. One and negative three. Two and negative two. Four and negative one. All right. So for my domain here, uh, this time we don't go negative infinity to positive infinity. It starts at the vertical asymptote, which is at x equals zero and it goes from zero to infinity, or x is greater than zero. Uh, let me write that a little bit nicer. For my range, bottom goes to negative infinity, top goes to positive infinity, so that's all real numbers. As y approaches infinity, the x also goes to infinity, but as y goes to negative infinity, x stops at zero. And for my x-intercept here, you may have to go further, or we can actually just solve it, because mathematically, we know how to solve that now. So, all right, so we can actually do this algebraically now. So what I can do is I'm trying to find my x-intercept. Instead of having to create my table and make it larger, what we can do is we can take our logarithm and we can set it equal to zero. Oops, let's... And now we can solve it. So the first thing I would do is I would add the three to the other side. Now I'm gonna convert it, because I can't actually solve this, so I'm gonna convert it to its exponential form. So two to the third power is equal to x, and we know that two to the third power is eight. So here, I can now know my x-intercept is eight comma zero, and this way, I didn't even have to actually make a whole extra point from the get-go. We know to set it equal to zero, and that's gonna give us our x-intercept, all right? On to the next one, did I answer, yeah, I answer those. Okay, so for numbers, topic two, it says, write in logarithmic form. So we're just converting between the forms, so I'm gonna write this here in the top so you can see it. So this would be our log form. So log base b of x is equal to y. If I wanted to convert it to its exponential equivalent, we start with the base b. The exponent is what logarithm is equal, so b to the y is equal to x. Okay, so for these ones, five, six, and seven, it says write in logarithmic form. So we start with log. Our base is b8 of 64. Remember, logarithms equals exponent, so the exponent here is a two. Okay. So from here, I won't be talking much. I'm just going to write the answers. Log base 2 of 32 is equal to x minus 4. And for 7, be careful on this one because it has a base e. So we don't write log base e. We write ln. So ln of x minus 2 is equal to 6. All right. On to write in exponential form. So right here again. So now we're converting it to this form right there. So we start with the base three, raised to the power of three is equal to 27. And this one has no base, so we know it's a 10. So 10 to the x is equal to seven. And here again, ln has a base of e, so e to the 38 is equal to x. All right, let's go ahead and keep going here. Uh, properties of logarithms. So condense um, each expression into a single logarithm. So we have those three properties. Um, the first thing we always wanna do when we're condensing is we wanna look at those coefficients and make them our exponents. So this three right here is gonna come over here and I have none in the other one. So now we have log of two cubed is eight. Now, hopefully recall when you are adding the logarithms, you actually multiply. 
So log of, so we do eight times X is eight X, eight times negative four is negative 32, and we're done. All right, for the next one, so again, we start with this one half power, the coefficient becomes a one half power here. So log base five and the square root of 324 is going to be 18 minus log base five of two. So the addition tells us to multiply, the subtraction tells us to divide, so log base five. And notice when I condense, it's only one logarithm, not multiple. So log base five of 18 divided by two, and 18 divided by two is nine, so we have log base five of nine. All right, on to the next one. So again, we look for those coefficients and we make them exponents. Be careful on this one, we're not bringing that negative sign, it's just the three halves. So six to the third power is going to be 216, so we have ln of 216 minus ln of, now four to the three halves, so the square root of four is two and two cubed is eight. Minus sign tells us to divide. Again, notice it's a single logarithm in condensing. So we have ln of 27. All right, let's go to the next ones. Now we are expanding, okay? So with these ones here, um, first thing you wanna do, we know they're multiplying, so that's very important to understand because we expand multiplication by addition. What I like to do first, I like to distribute this three. So uh, log base three of three times two is gonna be x to the sixth times y to the fifth cubed is y to the 15th. All right, we're gonna expand this, and while we expand, I'll do the first one like this, but the next ones I'm just going to skip one step here. So we have log base three of x to the sixth plus log base three of y to the 15th. And hopefully you recall that these exponents have to come to the front and multiply to the log when we are expanding. So my final answer here would be six times log base three of x plus 15 times log base three of y. All right, for number 15, um, so I'm gonna distribute that power first. We have ln, uh, this is a power of one, so that would be two to the fourth power divided by a, and this would be four times three, which is 12. Let me uh, see if I can make this a little bit smaller, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna have uh, two to the fourth power is 16, so we have ln of 16 minus, now that 12 is gonna go to the front, and it's gonna be ln of a. All right, on to number 16. First thing I wanna do, I wanna convert this square root to its equivalent exponent, which is the one half power. Okay, we're gonna distribute that one half. So we have log base four of p to the three halves times q to the 10 times one half is five. And last when we expanded, the three halves goes to the front for the first one. So three halves log base four of p plus five log base four of q. And there's my answer for number 16. All right, moving on to 17, uh, solving logarithmic and exponential equations. So first thing we look for, we see that they both have a log on both sides. So we're gonna just cross those out because I don't. it's a log equals a log and they both have the same base, so we cross these out. So I have 5x plus seven is equal to 2x plus 31. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the numbers to the left and I'm gonna move my constants to the right. So we have 5x minus 2x is 3x, 7 minus 7 is 0, 2x minus 2x is 0, and 31 minus 7 is 24. Divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 8. And from here, remember you plug it in to make sure your argument is positive. So 5 times 4 is 40, 40 plus 7 is 47, that's a positive argument. 2 times 8 is uh, 16, 16 plus 31 is 47. Both arguments are positive, so the answer checks out to be correct. 
All right, for number 18. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I wanna move my coefficients to exponents. And that's the only one I have. So before I condense, I know that 36 to the 1 half is the square root of 36. So I have log base 8 of 6 plus log base 8 of 3x plus 7 equals log base 8 of 132. Now, here we can't just cross out the log base 8 because it's not a logarithm equals a logarithm. So on the left side, we have to condense these two. Since it's plus, we're going to condense it by multiplication. So 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times 7 is 42. So at this point here, now we have a log equals a log, so we're going to cross out the log base 8s. So 18x plus 42 is equal to 132. Let's go ahead and subtract 42 to the other side. So we have 18x is equal to 90. And last, we're going to divide both sides by 18. And x is going to come out to equal 5. And again, you can plug that in. It's going to come out to both arguments being positive, so the answer should check out. All right, for 19, um, notice we have a log on one side and there's no log on the other. So you can't magically make up a log out of the right side. You can't do that. That's not possible. Because if you do a log base 2 on the right side, you also have to add another log base 2 to the left side, which would make no sense. So this is where we have a logarithm equals a number. So we're going to convert it first to its exponential form. So we just practiced that up top earlier. So we start with the base, 2. The exponent is what the logarithm equals, 7 equals x plus 2. Um, 2 to the 7th power is 128 equals x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, and x equals 126. Now, this is an exponential model, or sorry, logarithmic model, so you do have to plug it back in, make sure it works. And 126 plus 2 is a positive 128, so that answer should check out to be correct. All right, let's take a look at number 20. Um, so again, right here, uh, I have a 5 in front, and I don't want to make that an exponent because that would just make things really complicated. So I'm going to divide both sides by this 5 right here. So we have ln of 2x minus 1 is equal to 3. All right, from here, um, I'm going to convert it to its exponential form. So hopefully you remember the uh, base of ln is e, so e to the third equals 2x minus 1. Let's go ahead and add that 1 to the other side. So we have e to the third plus 1 equals to 2x. And last thing we'll do, we'll divide everything by 2. Then we're going to type this in our calculator. So let me do that real quick. Let's see. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and round this to two decimal places. So that's going to be x is approximately 10.54. There we go. Okay. All right, on to number 21. Okay, so 21, our exponentials equal exponential. So the first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find that common base here, and that's actually possible. So if I look at 9 and 27, um, they're both going to be 3. The base can be 3 because 3 squared is x minus 8. Sorry, 3 squared is 9, sorry. And on the other side, it's 1 over 3 cubed. Now, there is one extra thing you have to do here, so do be careful. So with this right here, we're actually going to have to um, bring the 3 raised to the third power to the top. So that's what it's going to look like right here. When I bring the 3 to the top, the exponent becomes a negative 3. Okay, at this point, hopefully you see the bases are the same, so I'm going to cross those out. And now we're going to set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So I'm going to distribute while I'm doing this. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Now for this one here, um, it would make more sense to move my variable to the left. That way, so it's just one step, but you can always do it how you want. So 2x minus 2x is 0. We have bring down our minus 16. Negative 6x minus 2x is negative 8x. And the last step we'll do to solve this is divide both sides by negative 8. And let's go ahead and fix that there. And so now we get x is equal to 2. All right, and you can plug that in to verify it. And it's an exponential function, so it should check out to be fine. 
All right, for number 22, um, we're back to a logarithm equals, or sorry, an exponential equals a number. We can't, this one, we cannot find a common base, right? Because E is a 2.71828, so 65 cannot be converted to that base, at least not without me knowing how to do it. So um, let's go ahead and convert this to the other one here. So let's see. Boo, boo, boo. Let's use this color here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do first an ln on both sides because my exponential function is already isolated. On the left side, ln and e are inverses, so they cancel each other out. So we have x plus one equals ln of 65. We're gonna go ahead and subtract that one over. And then when we type that in our calculator and we approximate it, it's gonna be 3.17. All right, on to 23. All right, for this one here, before we can isolate, the first thing we need to do, or before we can start solving it, we have to add 11 to the other side because the exponential part is not isolated yet. So that gives me 2 times 3 raised to the 4y power is equal to 72. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So 3 to the 4y is equal to 36. Now at this point here, uh, I'm going to do ln on both sides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this 4y to the front by the power rule. So we have 4y times ln of three is equal to ln of 36. We're gonna divide both sides by ln of three. And again, my suggestion to you is always to round your answer after when you're coming to your final answer. Don't do it any earlier because you could be off a little bit. And last, to solve for this, we're gonna divide both sides by four. So my answer would be y is equal to, and let's see what this one is, this is number 23. I worked that out to be 0 0.82. All right, so let's keep moving on. Number 24, okay, so we're gonna isolate this uh, exponential base, natural e. So we're gonna add seven to the other side. So negative 3e to the 2x minus 5 equals, what was that, negative 27. Divide both sides by negative 3. So we get e to the 2x minus 5 is equal to 9. Now this part here, our exponential part is isolated, so we're going to do ln on both sides. Again here, the ln and the e cancel each other out. So now we have 2x minus 5 on the left side equals ln of 9. We're gonna go ahead and add our five over. So two X equals LN of nine plus five. And last, we're gonna divide both sides by two. Then we're gonna type this in our calculator and estimate it. So let me do that real quick. And we get 3.598, which is going to be approximately 3.6 when rounded to two decimal places. All right, number 25. 25 is an application problem. It says, a baseball card that was valued at $200 in 1980 has increased. Okay, so information here. This looks like our starting value was 200. It has increased in value by 7% each year. Write a function to model the situation, then find the value of the card in 2020. Okay. So we have um, our initial amount is 200. Um, what else do we have? Um, this is a growth model, by the way. Uh, y equals a one plus r raised to the t power. All right, so we have our initial amount. We have our rate, which is going to be 7% is 0 0.07. And we don't know our Oh yeah, our time, we do know that. Uh, from 1980 to 2020, that is 40 years. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Y equals, uh, we have 200, one. Now, one plus 0 0.07 is 1.07. So it says to write a model first. So I'm raising it to the T power because that shows that I can type in whatever number for time and always get an answer. So that's my model. Let me mark that so you'll know. Whoops. Here we go. Model. Equation. There's my model. Now, for the other part, I'm going to plug in the 40 now. And now I'm going to type it in. 
And remember, this is money, so when you round it, it's gonna be $2,994.89. There you go. So remember, model, and there's my final answer. All right, let's go to this last part right here, which are all the word problems. So it says, Miles invested $2,400 into a retirement account that earns 1.8% interest compounded monthly. There we go. Because it's compounded monthly, that's compound interest. Write a function to model this situation, then find the balance of the account after 25 years. Okay. So let's start with our model first. So it is compounded interest. So I'm writing the formula right here. All right. So our principal amount is 2,400. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, our rate was 1.8, which would be 0.018%. Our N, the number of times it's compounded a year, I think it said it was compounded monthly, which is 12. And then for our time, it says find the balance after 25 years, so it's T is 25. So first we start with the model. So the model would be Y, sorry, I just realized I put a Y there and it should be an A. Sorry about that. So A equals the principal, one plus, let's see, what's my percentage here? 0 0.018 over 12 raised to the 12 times T. That right there, um, and then we can type this in our calculator because I want to see if I can simplify that one part in the calculator. So we have one plus 0 0.018 over 12 and okay so we can simplify so here's my model a equals 2400 1.0015 raised to the 12 t there's my model okay and now for my answer we're going to now plug it in so a equals 2400 1.0015 raised to the 12 times 25 and once you plug that into the calculator, you get $3,762.68. All right, on to 27. So it says a car is originally priced at $35,000 and it loses 5% of its value each year. How long will it take to depreciate to a value of $23,500? All right, so this is a decay model. So my original amount was, let's see, my original amount is 35,000. Uh, my rate is 5%, so 0 0.05. And the number of years is what we don't know. And so why our final amount is 23,500. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. So it says to, how long will it take? So in terms of a model, Y is equal to 35,000, one minus 0 0.05 raised to the T. So the model would be 35,000, 0.95 raised to the T power. That's my model. So now to get my answer here, we're gonna plug in that 23,500 to figure out the time here. So we have 23,500 equals 35,000, 0.95 raised to the t power. Okay, if you're solving for your time here, or usually your rate, which is the next one, it could possibly be that. Um, we're going to do natural log. So the process here, we would first divide both sides by 35,000. So let's see what 23, 23.5 divided by 35,000. Okay, so be careful here because um, I'm gonna convert this to a fraction so that I know what to type in at the end. So it's 47 over 70. And then we have 0.95 raised to the T power. So we're going to add an LN to both sides. And remember this T goes to the front. So now we have LN of 47 over 70 equals T times LN of 0.95. We're gonna go ahead and divide both sides by LN of 0.95. And 
last but not least, our answer will be, uh, let me type this in. get 7.766 so I would say 7.77 7. and that would be years all right let's go ahead and keep going uh, you deposit $200 into an account that pays $200 7% annual interest compounded continuously how long will it take for the balance to double? Okay, so this is PERT. A equals PERT. And how do I know that? It's because of the word continuous. So here, um, my initial amount was $200. Euler, my rate was 7%, which is 0 0.07. And it's asking how long will it take, so we don't know the time, to double. And if I take 200 and double it, I get 400. Okay, so we're gonna start first by dividing both sides by 200. We are solving for that t that's an exponent, so 2 equals e to the 0 0.07t. We're going to take ln of both sides, and nice thing about that when that happens is this cancels here, so now we have ln of 2 equals to 0 0.07 times t. Divide both sides by 0 0.07, and we'll do that real quick, so ln of 2 divided by 0 0.07 and we get 9.90 years when rounded to two decimal places. All right, number 29. A substance, MMG, uh, decomposes radioactively. It has a half-life, there we go, of 32 years. How much of the original substance will remain after 200 years? Okay, so let's talk about this problem here because what I noticed when people were doing this, um, there was no starting amount. So make it as easy as possible. You're gonna pick your own starting amount and we're gonna come up with a percentage. So the starting amount I'm gonna use is gonna be one. I feel like one would probably be the easiest thing to do. So the half-life formula looks like this. Sorry, let's try that again. Okay, so T over, that's an H. All right, so over here, so a substance, MMG decomposes radioactively, it ha its half-life is 32 years. How much of the original would remain after 100 years? Okay, so Y equals, my original amount is one, times one half raised to the half-life is 200 years. Sorry, 200 is a noun time and the half-life is 32 years, okay? So that's all you have to do, use one. You could, the number's really arbitrary, you could use whatever number you like. Um, I choose one because I think about 100%. So when I type this into my calculator, let's see what I get, 200 over 32, and I come up with 0 0.01313, and this is our rate, so we're gonna convert this to a percentage, so we move it one, two, three, so it's gonna be 1.31%. That's how much would remain after uh, 200 years. All right, down to our last question. Hospitals utilize radioactive substance iodine-131 in the diagnosis of conditions of the thyroid gland. The half-life of iodine-131 is eight days. Um, a, if a hospital acquires two grams of iodine, so we're talking about two grams is our initial amount, of iodine-131, how much of the sample will remain after 20 days? Okay, so let's do that first. So letter A says it's a half-life. Sorry, let's, this is letter A, not the equation. Letter A. Okay, so we have Y equals, our starting amount is two grams, one half. Our time is 20 days and our half-life was eight days. So we plug that in, we get 0 0.35 grams. And for letter B, how long will it be until there is only 0 0.01 grams remaining, okay? So we know our final amount is 0 0.01 grams. We set that equal to the initial amount two, one half. We don't know the time. 
over the half-life of eight days. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, divide both sides by two. So we have 0 0.005 equals one half, raise the T over eight. All right, we're gonna do LN on both sides. So LN here, LN here. Again, that's gonna move my exponent to the front. So I'm gonna write this over here, see if I can fit it. So we have LN of 0 0.005 equals T over eight times LN of one half. Divide both sides by LN of one half. All right, so now we have LN of 0 0.005 over LN of one half equals t over eight. We're gonna multiply both sides by eight. And we're gonna type this in now. So let's see, eight times n over d, ln 0.005, ln of 0.5. All right, and so our time is going to be 61 point one five and this is days and that actually completes the review